Hey guys, it's Jimmy here and welcome to my updated R Factor 2 review. Now, a couple of years ago I released a video talking about my initial impressions of R Factor 2. And at the time I was reasonably disappointed and you know I expressed this in the video. Uh, since then I've put in hundreds of hours into the game, I mean a lot of time. And now I feel like I'm a bit better qualified to comment on it as a sim and as an experience. So the first thing that we're going to discuss in this re-review of R Factor 2 is the area that I feel was criticised most heavily within the sim racing community today, and that is graphics. Um, now for the sake of this discussion I'm going to be talking only about uh, the stock content provided by ISI and not that which is implemented by third party modders. Graphically I think that R Factor 2 has come on a lot in the last couple of years, especially when you compare it to our last video. Um, the stock content that ISI provide, it looks it looks very natural and looks very believable, which is very important for the immersion side of things. Now, uh, if we compare this video to the one a couple of years ago, uh, you notice that in the last video there's a lot of HDR going on. It's a very saturated look that I can never quite get right in game, and I feel that made the, the game always look a little bit cartoony, and now it looks much more natural. Uh, I love the little details that are thrown in there, I mean my favourite detail are definitely the marshals that are at the side of the circuit, tirelessly waving their flags, I mean I did a 24 hour race once and there was a guy waving a blue flag for the majority of it, so kudos to him, I love seeing that driving past lap after lap. There's, there's things like visual tyre deformation, which is something we'll get into a bit later on because it's related to physics, but that's in there as well. And the game just runs better in general, I mean now I'm getting uh, with pretty much everything at max, quite constantly above 60 FPS, which I think is a vast improvement on what I had before. The audio and sounds in R Factor 2 uh, I'd say above average across the board. Not the best in the field, not the worst, but definitely above average. The engines, they just tend to miss that rawness that you just expect from racing cars. The rawness that you definitely get from games like Dirt Rally or Race Room Experience. Um, that's not to say that there isn't a degree of accuracy to the sounds, they do sound pretty realistic and they do sound quite like the real car, but it just there are other games that just do it better. So now I'm going to move on to the single player experience within uh, R Factor 2. Now, uh, AI I think is one of the better features of R Factor 2. Uh, the AI will race you into corners and they won't back out of that, you know, if you're halfway alongside, they will really race you proper and hard and they'll overtake you if you make mistakes coming out of corners or going in, into corners. They really are on it, so you have to be on it as well. It's very possible to have a convincing race with AI and you'd be entertained throughout, definitely. However, like any AI in any game, there always seems to be a corner on each track where the AI are weak or where they bottleneck or they will just slow down and to the credit of ISI though this happens a lot more often on modded tracks and on standard but it is still present and it still can break the immersion. On the other hand online is very hit and miss in R Factor 2. Most of the time you won't find more than 20 people in the entirety of the open lobby which compared to its competitors is pretty shocking to be honest. However R Factor 2 really isn't about pick up and play racing it's more about organised league racing and that, uh, I think anyway, is where you can find some of the most fun and rewarding racing on the internet. Uh, I belong to a league called the Virtual Endurance Championship or VEC for short which follows the WEC schedule or tries to at least and last time I checked that has around 90 teams signed up to it at uh, 2 to 5 people a team. Now you can do the maths, that's a lot of people. Um, now, well, the point I'm getting to here is that is all set up by a third party. It isn't set up by the by ISI or as part of R Factor 2. Someone's had to rent a server, get that all set up himself, himself on a website, and sort of go from there. There is pretty much no functionality uh, that R Factor 2 offers to host that system. And that is where uh, sims or services like uh, iRacing really are a cut above R Factor 2 when it comes to online play. The actual playability of the online is very good, I find. As long as the ping is under about 200, you can have some very good door-to-door -door racing. Anything above that, you tend to get a little bit of warping. Otherwise, though, I think it's fairly solid. There's not been many occasions in the last year or two where I've seen someone warp across the track, so online is pretty good in that department. So now I'm going to talk about where R Factor 2 really shines as a sim, and I mean really shines. R Factor 2, in mine and a lot of the sim racing community's opinion, has the best force feedback on the market. It's the only sim that I personally feel when I spin out or have a big slide or 
crash or do something stupid where I feel that is completely my fault. I can feel it through the wheel. I can feel every little detail going leading up to the moment and I know that I've done something wrong. Driving along the back straight at the historic spa circuit, which is a stock circuit in R-Factor 2, you can feel literally every bump through the wheel and in turn you can steer the car correctly and really uh, give good input back from the feedback you're getting from the wheel. Now part of this feeling is down to the stupendously ridiculous tyre model implemented in R-Factor 2. Uh, I'm going to try to have a video on screen now just showcasing the visual and physical movement of the tyre whilst cornering. And all, all the movement you're seeing there is representing the physics engine and then uh, fed back into the wheel. Uh, so you can feel when the, the tyre is losing grip, especially with understeer, the Civic BTCC car is fantastic if you guys want to go and hear that, or go and feel that I should say, sorry. And it, it, really, it doesn't end there. Uh, flat spotting, for example, is a real threat in R-Factor 2. Uh, if you aren't aware of what flat spotting is, imagine rubbing a rubber ball across the floor really hard and a little a flat surface that would be left after that is what flat spotting is. He says really poor, that's a really poor explanation, but you get what I mean. Um, so let's say you're in an open wheel car and you lock up heavily. You'll fill that flat spot through the steering until you change your tyres. Outstanding, really. You throw into that dynamic weather, including rain and fog, which I believe no other sim has really implemented well or at all in the last couple of years. A complete day-night cycle and a developing track. And it's a wonder, I feel, sometimes r 2 is as underrated as it is. I mean, my, my most memorable moment in sim racing is when I did commentary for the Virtual Endurance Championship uh, for Le Mans. The sun was coming up at Le Mans, it just started to rain, and the drivers were... You know, really putting on a show out there and it really felt so immersive despite the fact I wasn't driving I felt like I was there and I was watching them on and to have that from a sim that at the, at the time didn't look like the best sim out there I think it's just a testament to how fantastic uh, the features are in R-Factor 2. Now in the same vein um, R-Factor 2 I would definitely describe it as a flat out racing simulator. It's for those who really want to get down and dirty into the nitty gritty of driving and racing. Uh, as such, you really do need to have a wheel for this game. I mean, it pretty much is required. You can use a gamepad, you can use a keyboard, but if you can get the car on the track in any, well, get it around the track at all with either of those uh, peripherals, I'd be uh, fantastically impressed because I've tried it with a gamepad and I just had no chance, completely no chance at all. Anything less than a wheel in my eyes just will not do. So I do want to run over a couple of cons before I get off to ending this review to R-Factor 2. The first of which is centred around modding, or rather the lack of it. Now, for those who don't know the original R-Factor, um, that game, I think, had its lifespan extended by several years because of the modding community. I really do. I mean, if you go to a site called rfactorcentral.com, you can view a vast majority of the mods there, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of mods from you know, cars to tracks, both fantasy and real. And that just doesn't exist for R Factor 2. It isn't there. The uh, tyre model in R Factor 2 is so much more complex than that of R Factor 1 that I feel that a lot of modders are intimidated or just can't work with it. So, unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of modders from R Factor 2 go over to a set of quarter now and sort of apply their craft there. The other point I want to make is actually related to modding in a way. Um, I want to talk about the stock content in. R Factor 2. Now, I think the stock content that ISI provides for R Factor 2 is very good. That's not the issue I have here. The, the tracks are accurate, the cars uh, give good feedback and all. There's no problem there. The problem I have is how often we are getting these cars and tracks. Now, compared to other developers and other sims, uh, we don't get stuff very often in R Factor 2. Uh, I think the last car that came out as of this video was the AC Cobra, which I was very fortunate to get a uh, sort of advanced release on to test drive and make a video of. And it was very good, there was hype surrounding it, I enjoyed it. The hype subsided a couple of days after its release, and then since then we've heard nothing. Uh, there have been stock car videos released and sort of pictures released, but nothing from that. We have no release date. ISI is always very... I don't know, they're, they're very wiggly <laughs> on dates, they'll never give a date, it sort of just comes out. Which I think is a shame, because having a little bit more um, communication with the uh, with the fan base, I think will be very beneficial for ISI. And given that the modding community isn't really there, or isn't as strong as with R-Factor, I think that ISI needs to be filling that gap with their own stock content. 
So then the question that everyone wants to ask me whenever I do a review or a video about R Factor 2, is this game, or sim I should say, worth the money? And I say categorically yes. If you are a racing fan, um, I assume you are by subscribing to this channel, then this game is the best game on the market uh, to get as close as you can to real life racing. I mean the driving. The feedback is second to none. There is literally nothing else in the market that comes close to it with the exception of Game Stock Car Extreme. Nothing else after that, I don't think so. The, the day-night cycle, the rain, all those little immersion factors there, I think it's definitely worth the money. If you're looking for a more casual experience and maybe something like Assetto Corsa or Project Cars are worth the money, and I'm not saying those cars are casual, they're just more accessible, definitely. But uh, if, if you're looking for something a little bit less hardcore, then maybe this isn't your cup of tea. But for those out there who want to run, you know, 24 hours of the Mon race online, this is exactly the game that you want and you need. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that uh, update review. I've been meaning to do this for ages, and I'm so glad I finally got around to doing it. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, and if you really enjoyed it, subscribe to be notified of future videos. Again, guys, thank you for watching. Have an awesome day, and take care.